kind of, you know, it's kind of funny actually for me to be in a room here with all of you and all of the legislators that are here. About, I guess about a year and a half ago, I uh, sat in a room similar to this, and it was probably a little bit bigger, it was in Houston, and there were some politicians there, people that you may be familiar with, um, Jessica Farrar was there, uh, Garnet Coleman was there, and one particular person was there of importance, and uh, that was Hillary Clinton. I know you're all very impressed. <laughs> and I, uh, oh, and another person was there. Uh, Bill White was there. Bill White was there. He actually, uh, he was always at Planned Parenthood events, spread the word. And uh, he was there to give the, uh, opening, the opening speech for us. But the reason I was there at that conference was because I had been named the 2008 Employee of the Year. And, and that was about a year and a half ago. So now, I was at that dinner about a year and a half ago, and so now to be, was that two and a half years ago, I guess? Two and a half years ago. So now to be sitting in a room with all of you, some of, some of you legislators I know because I have been in your office pretty often promoting Planned Parenthood's agenda. So it's good to be on the right side of life. And you can take that off and watch it. You know, I, I did work for Planned Parenthood for eight years. I started off as a volunteer and and I, okay, I'm sorry, I like to be mobile, so I'm gonna move this. Okay. Um, I, I worked at Planned Parenthood for eight years. I started off as a volunteer, and uh, I was I went to Texas a and University. Woo! All right, and uh, I was a junior there, and I was just meandering through the student center, going uh, to the cafeteria to get something to eat, and I, I looked over, and I saw this booth, and it was done in favorite color and so it caught my attention. I walked over to the booth and there was this woman there and she started telling me about Planned Parenthood. And she asked me what I knew about Planned Parenthood. I said, you know, I really don't know anything about it, honestly. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Louisiana and then moved to a small town in Texas. So we didn't have Planned Parenthood around the towns that I lived and and uh, I knew that when I was in high school I, I told people that I was pro-life if the abortion topic ever came up. But It didn't frequently come up around the dinner table. And so, you know, I I just said I didn't really know anything about Planned Parenthood. She started telling me that Planned Parenthood was an organization that provided free services to men and women throughout the community. And they provided annual exams and they provided testing for cholesterol and diabetes and all these wonderful services. And I stood there and looked at her and I said, that is so sweet. <laughs> and I said, well, my gosh, Planned Parenthood sounds so great. And I said, well, what would I do if I was going to volunteer? And she started to tell me that Planned Parenthood also provided abortions. And I remember telling her at that time, well, you know what, I grew up pro life. And she said, I know, honey. Thank you. But you know, if abortion wasn't illegal, if abortion wasn't legal, if abortion were made illegal, don't you understand that there would be of women dying on the streets because of back alley abortions. Now you don't want that, do you? <laughs> and me, this naive college student who didn't really understand the ins and outs of abortion, looked at her and said, oh my gosh, that would be terrible. No, of course I don't want that. And she said, you would hate to be a reason that there would be such a huge setback for women in this country. You don't want to, you don't want to do that, do you? And I said, no. That would be terrible. And so I, I tell people, I guess I had sucker written across my forehead.
it because she handed me a, a Planned Parenthood volunteer application right there on the spot. I filled it out and the next week I was volunteering. And after I graduated from AM, I can always count on you know. Sometimes yeah, I go out to work and I say AM. And it's like crickets. <laughs> Is that what you like coffee? I have to remember where I am. Uh, so after I graduated with my undergrad, they offered me a job. And I started working there. I made pretty good money. You've got to pay your, your employees that work in the abortion industry pretty good money to keep them there. I got really good benefits, good perks, and and I thought, this is great. I'm helping women. I really believed that I was saving the lives of women. I really, really believed that. And after I, I was going to graduate school and getting my degree in counseling psychology, they promoted me again, and then they promoted me again. And then all of a sudden, I was the executive director of this abortion center where I had worked, and, and they also did family planning there. And so I believe that I was doing the right thing. And ironically, um, the people that retire with Planned Parenthood, the people that they think are going to be there for the rest of their working life, you know what they call them? They call them lifers. <laughs> so I was a Planned Parenthood lifer. I wonder what they call me now. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> So anyway, I, I was a Planned Parenthood lifer. I thought I was going to retire with Planned Parenthood. And then all of a sudden, in 2009, things started changing for me. And I tell people, I'm not really sure if it was that the organization was actually changing or if it was that the truth was finally coming out in front of me. And that I was finally starting to see what this organization was really about. I had a meeting with my supervisor in August of 2009, and, and the way that Planned Parenthood sets up their budget is pretty simple. They have a certain number of clients that they want you to see in each one of your budgets. You have a family planning budget, and you have an abortion budget. And they have a certain number of clients that they want you to see for each clinic. And I was looking at my budget, and I was comparing my budget to my, my current, my future budget, to my previous year budget, and I thought, something's not right. Something must be wrong here. Because the numbers of patients that they wanted me to see for fiscal year 2010 in my family planning clinic had pretty much stayed the same. But the number of patients that they wanted me to see for my abortion clinic had almost doubled. And I thought, this doesn't seem right. I mean, we're in the business of reducing the number of, the number of abortions, right? Didn't we hear Obama say that? It must be true. And I really believe that that's what we were doing. I really believe that we were preventing the need for abortion. And that's really what I thought that we were doing. And so I was surprised when I looked at these numbers and I thought that there must be an error. I thought something must be wrong here and so I said that out loud. I said, I think there's an error here. Something must be wrong and my supervisor looked back at me and she said, Abby, you have got to get your priorities straight. Abortion needs to be your priority because that's where we make our money. Now, to a group of you, people who are alive, looking back at me and you're going, well, duh, my <laughs> silly woman. But for me, a person that really believed in the stated mission of Planned Parenthood, I was shocked. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I looked back at my supervisor and I thought, there's something wrong with you. You have not had enough Starbucks today. <laughs> something you are not thinking clearly. And I think I'm going to have to tell your supervisor on you. And I thought, something's not right with And so I, I kind of dismissed it, but it was in the back of my mind. And, and then it rolled around to September. And then the day came that forever changed my life. And that's why I'm standing in front of you today. It was a day late in September, we had a visiting physician come in to us from Austin. And 
and he's a private practice abortionist. Him and his wife both perform abortions, abortions here in Austin. And we were trying him out. We wanted to see if he was going to, if we were going to put him on our permanent rotation of physicians. And a couple weeks before, when I had been talking to him, he told me that at his own abortion clinic, he only did a type of procedure where he used ultrasound guidance during every abortion. And that was new to me because that was not Planned Parenthood's standard protocol. We did not use ultrasound guidance during the actual abortion procedure. And so I was not familiar with this. As far as I know, that had never been done, had never been performed in our clinic. And so I asked him why he did that in his clinic. And he started describing some of the reasons. And, and so let's do a little audience participation here. I know there's a lot of you. We're going to do this. Okay. How many of you have ever had your tonsils taken out? Okay, no good. How many of you have ever had anything removed from your body at any point in time, including teeth? Good. Good. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So, now, whenever the doctor or dentist or whatever came into you and said, here's the consent form, right? You know how you have to fill out a consent every time you have something done. And the doctor comes into you and has a consent form ready for you. And he says, here's a consent form, and you're about to sign it, but hold on just a minute. I was thinking about doing your procedure a little differently today. You know, I've done this like a million times. And I'm kind of getting bored with doing it the same way all the time. And so I was thinking for you, I would jazz it up a little bit. So this time with your procedure, I'm going to do it blindfolded. What do you say? Anybody? Any takers? Blindfolded surgery? No? Well, why not? This is how we do abortions almost 4,000 times a day in our country. Blindly. So here's what happens. The doctor has an instrument called a cannula. It's a, a kind of a rigid piece of plastic, and that's what's hooked up to the suction machine. They put that piece of plastic, they put that cannula into the woman's uterus. And when they think they feel some tension at the top of her uterus, they assume that's the top of her uterus, and they stop. And then they move it a little bit over to the right, and when they think they feel the side of her uterus, they stop. And then they do the same thing to the other side. Now what happens if he doesn't feel that tension at the right, at the right point? He will put that cannula all the way through her uterus. There have been girls as young as 12 and 13 that have lost their fertility for the rest of their lives because of this safe medical procedure, because of this medical procedure that is the most common procedure done in this country. So safe, right? There have been times where the doctor has inserted that cannula so far up into the woman that it has gone all the way up into her bowel. Women die from this. This is serious. So when he started to tell me that he uses this, this safer procedure, I thought, why then? This makes sense. Why wouldn't we do this all the time? So I went back to my sweet supervisor, and I asked her that question. And she said, Abby, using ultrasound guidance takes about five extra minutes per patient. <laughs> and we're trying to do, you know, anywhere 25 to 40 procedures a day. We don't have time for an extra five minutes per patient. Oh. You know, time is money. So there was my answer. There was that patient safety that Planned Parenthood is always stating that they're for.